in studio with the superintendent of schools, Ron Stevens. Ron, who's always factually accurate as well. Yeah, he's got people three, back in his office. Three of he's us have something Jess going on and, in this room. Yeah, yeah. One exactly. of these things is not like the other. Be, be careful now today, Ron, because Matt Harvey is standing there with his uh, computer or calculator. Anything you say, we're going to get a fact check, check coming right in. Satellites are linking up. I got all of it. Yeah, facts. I got it. All facts. Admirals do not like to be incorrect. I understand. That's how you get the Titanic. When the, when the captain of the ship is wrong, you got problems. Ooh. Amen. Uh, Ron, let's, let's talk about the SBA and some requests that have been made uh, for uh, money for uh, Berkeley County and some new schools. I think I saw the figure was $25 million. It, yes. Um, you know, our, our uh, current... Uh, bond projects, the list of projects that we're, um, we're uh, committed to complete uh, for Berkeley County Schools on behalf of the, of, uh, the Berkeley County um, contingency. Um, we have started, we had started a conversation with the uh, School Building Authority, the SBA, mm-hmm. um, who grants funding to schools for building projects and needs projects. And uh, that conversation has been going on with Berkeley County for the past two, two and a half years based on our CEFP and planning projects uh, over time. Um, Last summer in August, I approached the SBA. uh, And of course, the conversation had been going on ongoing before I took office. And um, we were just in conversations with them, basically saying what's an appropriate amount to ask for Um, there here are projects that we need to complete in berkeley county we need your support to be able to to uh to build up the infrastructure here that conversation took place again a little bit before i um was in office but then it really we hit the ground running last summer Uh, we did another presentation uh to the school building authority uh in the month of november and we're waiting to hear um, the grants are awarded on on uh, this coming Monday, as a matter of fact, December the 11th. But our ask was, in fact, for $25 million um, from the school building authority to be put towards the construction of our elementary projects that we have uh, on the south end of the county, on the uh, Mountain Ridge campus, mm-hmm. and then on the north end of the county in the Falling Waters area. So, um you know that's that's what we went to them and asked for. We have a uh, we had a very good um, presentation put together. We've got a lot of positive feedback from the committee, from the members that are um, with the school building authority. But again, um, there's 55 districts. I know that there were 27 districts that presented and, and are requesting funding. And I know that um, this is a, this is a, the school building authority has provided uh, funding from the governor. Um, to, to distribute throughout. Does the $25 million cover the cost of both schools only, or is there a lot more stuff involved in the $25 million? Um, $25 million is a piece uh, of, of what it is. Generally, uh, we're looking at a cost for, for uh, one of the schools. That would be 25% uh, of the cost of one of the schools. And uh, you know, you go to the school building authority hoping that they're going to be able to give you uh, some supplemental funding for Berkeley County because of our growth. We want to make sure that we have that funding so that we can we can build the maximum size mm-hmm. um, facility uh, available with the funding that we have matched uh, paired with what they have. And I was going to ask students? about that. The mm-hmm. match. Um, so is it dollar for dollar, Ron, or? It, 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 it really depends. Okay. Um, it, it depends on your need. It depends on your project. It depends on what is presented and what it, what is asked for. Um, and I, I'm I'm not up on the exact amount of of um, the exact figures that the, the governor has allotted to the school building authority this gotcha. year. Um, but in past years, it's been anywhere between forty five and sixty five million dollars. Um, ranging in the 50 mark i hear that it's it's supposed to be increased a little bit but i i don't know that for for a fact and when we go in uh large county lots of growth new buildings um and we we're asking for some support they feel not obligated but you know they're it's a it's a good 
situation for them to invest in a county that takes care of their buildings. Sure. You know, uh, the average um, age of our buildings right now is 56 years old. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have 10 uh, in, in um by the year 2030, we'll have 10 schools that are 100 years old or older, which is 25% of our schools, our current schools. That's that shows that we take care of our property and uh, you know, our and our buildings. Don and you notice called you Don because Matt Harvey fact checked and said your name is Don <laughs> as opposed to Ron. So so Don, how Don, <laughs> yeah, how well does this how how well does this argument of Growth County resonate with the decision makers in Charleston? I go back mm-hmm. to the argument of uh, of other infrastructure, and we say we're a Growth County, we need the infrastructure. Their rebuttal back is sure you're Growth county but we have a lot of other counties that are not growth county that on the verge of collapsing absolutely so how how strong does that argument resonate well um you know it, it's difficult when a majority of the state is in a in a is in a different situation than we are in a, in a majority almost all well all of the other counties are really in a different situation with us um you know, so I feel it's very important for us to be there in person, to present things in person, to invite them up here. We've we've had them up here a couple of times during during my tenure just just for that, so they can ride around and see the growth that's taking place. And um, wow, the last time I was here, this entire area of of growth was here. Here. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah. And, orchards. Uh, uh, yeah. That, that's that's very different from the rest of the state. It is it is a tough sell because a majority of the of the people that are there haven't been here, don't know what we're going through, and their constituents aren't going through this. So it's you know, and it's 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 tough. Um, I feel like we're in a good place. I think that we've got a good relationship with um, with with the committee. Um, I. I I think we've done all that we can do. Yeah. And uh, again, December the 11th, Monday, uh, they'll make the you announcements. Hear? They'll make the announcements. And um, and so you're saying uh, uh, 25 million from the SBA, and then your, your a local bond contribution of nearly 42 million. Right, Cl- close to 43. Yeah. But yes. Um, yeah. And Jackie Long posted it, this is an additional 25 million dollar request. Ron slash Don. <laughs> just for clarification it is just ron <laughs> mr harvey we need you to see get the rest of the story <laughs> see see matt your credibility has been shot through full of holes <laughs> that goes back to everything um it, it is 25 million dollars uh, above and beyond our bond right. money yeah. um and this is uh, this is yet to be awarded to us um we feel good about it we've we've been you know verbally Everything has checked the right boxes. Our presentations, everything has checked the right boxes. The official awards will take place on Monday, and they could do. You know, we've we've got a building um, plan, a, a process over the next um, four or five years, and so the, you know, the the money that they will be able to offer to schools could be. In one lump sum, they could they could stretch it over a two year period of time. Um, so it's you know, what what is the size of the state's uh, school building authority? What's the budget? Do you have any idea? Uh, well, that's what I was just saying. I, I don't know oh, what I'm it sorry. is this okay. year. Yeah. Um, what is in in the past? It's yeah. been in the fifties. Okay, uh, so, range. So that our, your request is a sizable. Portion it is it is that. a sizable portion yeah. of that, and and I uh, would not. You know, I, I hope that they're able to say it's it's give you the whole thing, give the whole thing. But I, I but they may not. Uh, they may not, um, and they may divide it over um, a, couple of years. A, a couple of years. So any of that would still be good uh, if we're able to get the entire twenty five million. When yeah. you start a school, how long does it take? Once you let's say you were to get the money that you would need, when would be the first time that school would open its doors? We, we're in the planning process now. The schools are going to open their doors. It just we have we're in a holding pattern until we are able to um, determine: can we add these extra rooms? Can we have this extra space? Can we do a few more bells and whistles at these schools, or do we have to go mm-hmm. more bare bones? So we're going to have. And what uh, what capacity do you build to 
Ron? Uh, pro- projected enrollment. Um, that if we're going to be if we qualify for the SB monies, which we we had to do, um, you have to build, you have to project the the population that is going to be entering that school and what the enrollment is going to be when it opens its doors, and you have to um, have eighty five percent of that enrollment. So, you know it. Again, we're in the process mm-hmm. of doing all of that, and we've we've met the you know the SBA's guidelines on that so I'm I'm looking forward to being able to do that on the north end we're looking at a facility that uh, will have between um, 650 and 750 students when it opens its doors Uh, many of those will be new students but many of those will Mm be re um, districted uh, well you don't like to say that right word. redistricted but um coming realigned from, yeah, How about that? coming from a... other schools um at that time yeah oh, redistricting moved. Was just yeah, yeah. right oh. are we still using a lot of trailers is for for educational space yes we call them I portables mean, now bill portables okay. when, when you say uh, a lot it, it just depends i think that we have less uh percentage-wise classrooms that are um, portable classroom spaces now than we have had at times in the past, but if we if if we don't move forward with this with this building plan and increase our infrastructure uh, to to house the enrollment that's coming, then we'll see an increase in that again. Now the SBA funds are direct appropriation from our legislators. Uh, do the legislators get involved at all after they make the appropriations? They try to influence uh, where the money goes. Well, I don't know if they try to influence. Yeah. Uh, you know that officially there is a there is a board. There there are employees of the school building authority that do all the legwork. They have engineers and and architects that that um, talk with school districts about their needs and help them design. You know what would be appropriate. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, there's a there's a whole set of uh, forms that you've got to complete, you know, like a book of information you have to supply. And then there's a there's a board of uh, of people from around the state that gather just um, like normal boards. And then they these this information is presented, and that board has the authority at that time to to make the decisions. It's not outside people; it's that board. Is there Eastern Panhandle representation on the board? Used to be Sandy Hamilton, right? Yes. Still Sandy? Yes. Okay. Sandy is still mm-hmm. on the okay. board. Okay. Yes. I was not mm-hmm. sure. Ron, I understand that you folks hired five new bus drivers. However, the complaints in our Facebook uh, comment section are still alive and active. That uh, the one lady, I think Faith Hall said, I think it was Faith, said her kid missed uh, 20 days of school so far. I shouldn't say it that way. Her 20 t- times she said to transport her kid to school because there was no bus that day. Uh, I, I don't have in front of me the statistics on which bus, how many times. That they I'm not asking you for that, just but representing I, I the frustration. You, I, I, absolutely, and I share the frustration. We um, we started the year, and you know we, we were 15 runs short, and that doesn't even include the day-to-day subs. I've had this conversation yep. with you before, mm-hmm. um, and we are slowly chipping away. At, at filling those those runs and when we get the runs all filled then the the additional bus drivers that are hired will be able to be a pool of substitutes if someone is going to miss a run if a driver is not going to be able to fill their run and they're able to notify the transportation department the day before we have a plan to be able to do that we we, we covered all of the runs when, even when we were short those 15 drivers. The issue comes in on the morning of, we don't have a substitute to call in and say, you know, go take Rob's run. He's he's not here today. It, it takes a lot of, you know, work to put together the puzzle the day before to make sure all of those runs can be covered. And there's, there's rules and regulations that we have to follow when it comes to service personnel and bus drivers. Um, but... Um, we're getting closer, mm-hmm. and you know. Has Bill Stubblefield applied yet? I have not seen his name. Okay, I was curious. He's not driving on Thursdays. I'll tell you. Yeah, I was going to say. Have, have you have you seen me drive <laughs> lately? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I was on the air with you and mm-hmm. talked about the mm-hmm. the um, 
promotion that we had at our transportation department. We've, we've gotten a lot of interest from that. There are a number of people that expressed interest. It takes about six weeks for someone to apply. Still time, Bill. Yeah, you still have time. You get in <laughs> and, and start right after the first of the year but it takes on Thursday. To see them through <laughs> until they could be an eligible driver, it takes, mm-hmm. it takes that length of time. So uh, we're, we are getting there. <clears throat> we're, we're down to where there are only five uh, runs yeah. that we're having to cover every single day with other drivers. But that still means that there are no substitutes for the morning of. And right. that's that's going to be the continued issue until we can fill the, yeah. the pool. Picking up on what Maria said, I have this image in front of me now. Which would I rather face? Screaming, a busload of screaming seven-year-olds or a screaming Rob? Well, if I can chime in on that, if, I, if I'm <laughs> passing a bus on the road and I see you at the helm, I will definitely pull over and give you space. <laughs> Is it that bad, Bill? <laughs> it's that bad. But but our good friend Ron slash Don did not have to spell it out in such clarity. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a diff- I, if you're a parent and you're, you're affected by this, it's everything because you your day is can't be more affected yeah. than when your kid exactly. isn't at school when they're supposed to be and not planned. That's a big unplanned thing. exactly. And I've been through that when my my boys were younger. But on the other hand, the school system cannot create drivers out of a 3D printer. If there's not enough interest in becoming a driver, there's not a whole lot you can do. And in regards to the driver's salary, that's established by the state and regulated by the state, not Berkeley County. So you're kind of in a situation here where you're at the mercy of things that are beyond your control. Well, you know, COVID had its effects. And uh, during the pandemic, uh, there were a lot of people that left um their workforce no matter where it was and you know whether you're a waitress or a nurse a teacher or a bus driver a lot of that was taking place we still have perm subs and vacancies in our buildings that teachers are covering mm-hmm. um the difference is they're in the buildings and it's it's we're not transferring responsibility to parents and you know it's it's very difficult i um we talk about this every single day, and I, I feel the frustration of parents who, who have to uh, make the effort to transport their students. I, I wish that there was something that I could think of. I hear it, like I said, every day, and we are working towards that. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, that, that crop of people that uh, showed interest mm-hmm. at, at our recruiting event uh, – we will have enough to fill those roles and then have some for substitutes. So, Rob, I there's listen, a light at the end of the tunnel. I listen to Ron. I we tend I tend to think of a school issue as kind of monolithic. It's just one big problem, but it's a host of individual problems. School security, availability of bus drivers, the uh, availability of teachers, the uh, K through uh, K through two or K through three aides in schools, uh, the discipline problems, the parents' frustration. Uh, you're carrying enough balls, keeping enough balls in the air that I don't see how you can do it. So my hat's off to you and all the other superintendents facing these multitude of problems. Well, I really appreciate that. I, I appreciate the, the consideration that. Uh, goes a long way to know that somebody understands that, but there's still a lot of responsibility. I lose sleep at night. Um, you know, my wife gets frustrated with me getting up and down and out of bed and writing down ideas and um, and taking calls in the middle of the night. But you know, she's supportive. The community is is overall supportive, and um, you know, I I think that's a good thing. On a on a good news note, Hal Van Meter um, spoke at Rotary just a little brief golden moment piece. And we've talked about chronic absenteeism here. And um, he reported that that number has decreased is less than 20% now because I, I, you know, when he gave the overall presentation, I was like, Oh my goodness. Um, So you're chipping away at that as well. We are. And our, our, um, I'm sorry, our attendance department, Hal and, and our attendance workers have done a fantastic job of getting the word out. The schools are, are buying in, parents and students are um, are being are buying in, being held accountable, uh, understand the importance of attendance. Um, you know, it you we're we're balancing on a on the end of a needle. I mean mm-hmm. it's so so fine because it would just take one one event maybe that could toss that whole thing in sure. uh, into an uproar. But right now, 
we're in, we're in a good place and we're and we're going in a good direction. I really appreciate the work they're doing. You got uh, time for some uh, superintendent shout outs here. Ron. Awesome. Awesome. I just wanted to you know, I know that we went over some of these things at our at our board meeting the other night, but I I wanted to go on the air and officially congratulate Kelsey Murphy from Hedgesville Elementary School as our uh, caring educator award winner. Uh, wonderful family. She puts students first and if you'd have been at the meeting the other night, uh, she made sure that there were a group of students that came to support her, and she made sure that they all had a photo opportunity uh, with her, and that was that was excellent to awesome. see. I also want to congratulate William Swan from Spring Mills High School. He's been nominated to West Point by uh, Senator Manchin. Impressive. So, yeah, nice. yeah, you just wanted to uh, give a shout-out, and then if I'm missing anybody there, um, if they've gotten um, appointments, uh, let me know. I'm very proud of all of them. Um, would – wouldn't be a Martinsburg show without congratulating the Bulldogs on their 10th uh, uh, state championship. That's been fantastic. Um, to Did follow. you go to Wheeling? I, unfortunately, I was not able to make the trip to Wheeling. My okay. son flew in from Houston that weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, announcing now to the entire county that I'm an expecting grandfather. Hey, congratulations. Got a granddaughter coming in uh, early spring. And um, they flew in and was able to spend some time with them. Don't get Excellent. to see them very often. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but we, as a family, watched the game. Yeah. yeah um, and my son in Sacramento called, and we were all together watching the game at the same time. So that was really neat. I do want to give a reminder to the community that there's a two-hour uh, um, delay to school scheduled for Thursday, December the 14th. And that is a teacher work day. Uh, staff is to work uh, report on time. Uh, students will be two hours late for that. Um, December 24th, or 21st. Uh, there is an early dismissal, which will be a student, uh, I mean, a uh, student early dismissal. Faculty Senate um, will will be meeting uh, to start their, um, to finish this year out and start their holiday break. So, now I just want to wish everybody a, a happy holidays. I don't know that I'll get an opportunity to be with you before. You will. Before. Elaine uh, has you scheduled for I'm December back 20. On? Yeah, Elaine has you on December 20th. December 20. Oh, my goodness. i gotta got to check my calendar on that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's good news. That's good news. <laughs> you thought you were done with me. <laughs> You're like, I get the whole month off of Mario. <laughs> uh, anything else? I don't have anything else. I appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for coming in, man. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Superintendent of Schools Ron Stevens at uh, 9 o'clock on Talk Radio WR Martinsburg and TV 10.